and I see them and talk with them. My, 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 my ancestors, when I'm writing, I see them and talk with them. My ancestors, when I'm writing, I see them and talk with them. Welcome back, everybody, to part two of the Zero to Hero Footwork series, where I take you from zero experience and give you the knowledge to become a footwork champion. Apologies for taking so long to release part two. I've just been very busy with real life, and so I appreciate everyone's patience. In the last video, we explored some simple animal movements that will help give you a foundation for footwork movement. And I encourage you to keep coming back to those movements since they'll continue to be beneficial as your body grows, accustomed to moving around on the floor. In this video, we're gonna explore more foundational movements along with proper hand and footwork placement and look at the absolute basic frontal footwork that you'll need to get started. First, let's look at form and the importance of proper foot and hand placement. To start off, you want to get comfortable with a basic squat where you're on your toes sitting on your heels. A big tendency for beginners is to fall back on your heels and get flat footed. We want to avoid this if possible for a couple main reasons. Number one, being on your toes will give you more spring and power to your steps, which will help with your speed and explosiveness in footwork. Number two is because it makes things much easier for supporting our body weight. When we sit on our heels, we're supporting a large part of our body weight with our legs, which are big, strong muscles. When we fall back on our heels and go flat-footed, we're leaving a large part of our body unsupported, and our arms, which are much weaker, relatively speaking, compared to our legs, end up having to carry more of that weight. So try your best to stay on your toes, but also just listen to your body. For some of you, this might have to be a gradual process as your body gets used to these positions and builds the strength to be able to hold them. Again, the movements in part one, particularly the duck walks, are going to help you out with this. As for your hands, it's really important to try and keep them directly under your shoulders. Just like how your foot placement is important for supporting your body, your hand placement is equally important because for a lot of footwork, your weight is actually going to be supported by your arms and hands. You might have also noticed that sometimes I'm on my fingertips. This is something that I recommend as long as your fingers are strong enough to do it. Doing this will make the transition from side to side a little easier on your wrist because one, we're spreading out the impact over a larger surface area instead of just the heel of your palm. Two, it also reduces the distance you have to reach down, speeding up the transition slightly. And three, being on your fingers is kind of the equivalent of being on your toes when moving around in footwork. Again, this will give you a bit more spring to your hand movements and speed up the transitions. Please don't rush into this since you can potentially injure yourself and you should definitely work up to it. As you build up the strength, you can move on to something like this next drill. Here we're going to work on a basic switch in the front of our footwork. This is an essential movement to master because it's going to help you get comfortable with supporting your body weight with your arms and also get you used to a movement you're going to be using all the time in footwork. Essentially what you're doing is putting one hand down, putting all the weight on it and switching legs quickly, then repeating it on the other side. It's pretty simple, right? Just try to remember a few things as you do it. Number one, as I mentioned earlier, staying on your toes is important in footwork. A common mistake that people make is slowly ending up flat-footed as they do the switches, so do your best to always bring your heels right under your butt and try and stay on your toes. Number two, if you can, I recommend being more on your fingertips rather than being flat-handed because it's going to make the transition smoother and easier as well as reduce the impact on your wrist. But I want to stress this again. Build up to this and make sure you have the proper finger strength to do it properly. Otherwise, you might do what I did when I was younger and dislocate your thumb. Anyway, this is a great drill and something you should come back to even after you feel you have it down. It's actually something I use to warm up before practices all the time. Feel free to try and add some variety to the drill with some movement if you find it too boring. Try things like turning in a circle, moving forward and backwards or side to side. Learning this will help you in the long run with your hand transitions as well as the switch that's in a lot of frontal footwork. 
The next drill is going to work on leg strength and hip movement. It might not be obvious in the beginning, but your hips are actually very important if you want any kind of power or dynamic movement in your footwork. So to start off, all you want to do is just push your hips forward, bringing your knees near the floor. As you get more comfortable, you can start alternating hands and even start experimenting with which direction your knees move in. This movement can be a bit tough on the legs and knees, so make sure you take regular breaks to rest your legs. Always listen to your body and don't push yourself too hard, especially in the beginning when your body's still getting used to this position. The final level is to play around with the different directions and even work on doing a circular motion with your hips. This last movement will really start to emphasize how your hips can be incorporated into your footwork. The last movement I want to look at is a single leg kick out. This drill is going to build upon the hip movement we worked on with the previous drill and incorporate more of the legs. Start with just extending your leg and bringing it back in. Switch sides and repeat. Simple. As you get more and more comfortable, you can start thinking about pushing your hips out a bit more as your leg extends. Play around with both your legs and also how your upper body moves and has to compensate as you make the movement more and more dynamic. Keep playing around with the movement by changing directions, legs and angles. Once you get comfortable with this, it'll help you out with the more physically demanding movements such as two-footed kickouts. And that's it. You're now well on your way to getting your body prepared for the more complicated movements in footwork. And at the same time, learning some very simple movements that will serve you well throughout your footwork journey. It's always good to come back to these simple movements, not only for warm-ups, but also just to remember the basics. If these movements are strong, all the other movements become that much easier. Keep building a strong base and the more difficult moves will come with time. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Thanks for sticking with the video until the end, and a huge shout out to everyone who supported me on Patreon. You're the ones that keep these videos going. Good luck with your dancing, and we'll see you all in part 3 where we'll start to visit some of the more common footwork steps like CCs and hooks. Peace. <laughs>